get off the freaking net. And welcome to the Blaze On Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. And welcome back to Blaze On Nation. Here with your host today, always, JBJ Blaze. Episode 8 recorded on the 17th of October, 2013. And... Yeah. So, I guess I'll just get to the sidewalk talk thing. I still have not made a bumper for it yet, because I suck. I'm awful. Well, no, not really, but... I just haven't really found the time to get to it yet. Plus, the last... I had to do Cookie Conundrum numero three on Tuesday, and then I had to do um, Blaze on Nation number seven on Sunday, because I had to do a re 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 recording. Trying to make it sound nicer than that, but. Can only do that with if it was re 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 recording. If that's uh, I don't know, but um, that's what's been going on. I still have yet to release Blaze on Nation number seven and Cookie Conundrum episode three, so I will be sure to get those out as soon as possible, as well as this one. Um, things have been very um, um, not really good with time, and then tomorrow I will be releasing the ninth episode of my Pokemon, of my hardcore Pokemon 3D Let's Play on my YouTube channel, so I'm quite excited for that, and Hopefully, maybe Saturday or something like that, I can maybe, well, unless I'm doing book deliveries for my mother, possibly do more Let's Plays. Maybe. I don't know. But, um, that's pretty much all that's been going on, other than I had a pretty darn good Thanksgiving, if I do say. And, yeah... And, be, before I get too much further into things, um, I would like to say I'm doing something special this episode, and it's something that I've been wanting to do sometime, never got to do it, because no one ever really did it other than in the chat, and you'll find out about that later in the tonight's show. So, um, I guess let's get to the rundown, shall we? Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. Alright, so on the rundown this night, we have only articles, in which these were going to be in Blaze on Nation episode 7, but... I push them to this one so that I'd have less to deal with in this episode. So we have, and I forget if I got to one of these on the previous episode. Uh, actually, no, we don't. Well, we have all articles, or, or do we? Uh, I forget what this one was. Um, oh! Okay, maybe not. So, one video again. Uh, it's a YouTube video. So, Edward Snowden's email provider Lavabit defies FBI demands to turn over crypto keys as documents show. U.S. adults score below average on worldwide tests. Oakland, California, Calif uh, crowdfunding their own private cops. WikiLeaks leaks. The fifth estate script in which the movie is about them, yet not about them. And the last article is 
a disapproving letter from Julian Assange to Bede Benedict Cumberbatch regarding his appearance in the Fifth Estate. And we have actually one more article in which it's on the Inquisitor, in which Minecraft, you might have heard of this, which this is the subject of games being blamed for violence, in which this one is actually the most outrageous you'll probably hear about, Minecraft being blamed for school violence in Florida. The last one is a video from the Young Turks, um, about Malala telling Obama off, or in other words, she actually said that he's doing something wrong to his frickin' face. Now, from what I've heard, no one else has been brave enough to tell that to his face, but she did. That's what makes her so brave. So, I guess let's get to the details. The lines between the lines between the lines between the lines. Okay, there, that's my crappy half buttocked bumper. But, um,. Let's get to the first one here, shall we? I'll get to that in that one part. Um. All right. So if it'll load up here. So what's going on with Edward Snowden and his email provider? Lava bit and the FBI is that the FBI <laughs> hopefully you didn't hear that yawn of mine. But um his email provider defied FBI's demands to turn over crypto keys in which they so the US government in July obtained a search warrant demanding that Edward Snowden's email provider, Lavabit, turn over the private SSL keys that protected all web traffic to the site, according to newly sealed documents. And I will, of course, leave a link to this in the show notes. And if you want, you can go through all 162 pages of this leaked document. Which, as for myself, I don't feel like going through that many pages. Um, and, yeah. So, basically, my view on that is... <laughs> basically, they've been... It's just... More of, um... Hey, here's a new way that we could possibly spy on the guy that revealed our secrets that we're spying on the whole world. Well, not us, the FBI, but the other guys, the NSA people, that they've been spying on a heck of a lot of the world without anyone's knowing or permission other than the U.S. government. Which is why they get some dirt from it, too. Because they allow it. Not to mention, it's highly unconstitutional, too. Because in the Fourth Amendment, it is illegal to spy on the citizens each and every move. And in this video I watched, I got to learn a bit from it. When the U.S. became independent from Britain, that's one of the things they wanted, was to do this so that Britain wouldn't be getting into spying on them or anything. So that they could have their own business without 
Britain not minding it. And this just goes AWOL on that. Uh, uh, everything with the uh, NSA goes AWOL on that. And <sighs> it's bloody amazing that the government would support... Well, I, I suppose maybe it's not that surprising, because we are talking governments here, so... You know, they like to spy on their own people, assume everyone's a friggin' c criminal, and actually that's another thing I believe that's also in the Constitution. A person may have themselves free of incrimination, or in other words, being deemed a criminal. And that's the other thing too, is that with this extreme surveillance, like, the, the surveillance I'm pretty sure in the first place would be to figure out what the criminals are doing. But, yet it's spying on everyone else as well. And, are they criminals? Some of them may have done criminal acts, but... They're not as criminal as these other people, I suppose you could say. They're not in jail yet. In other words. <laughs> Unfortunately, broadcasting on night during night the night time has a little impact on my amount of yawning. But um Honestly, th thank you myself, I guess it's a bit different for me because my email providers are Hotmail and Gmail. Thank you. The, the only other thing is they, if they want to do that stuff with their users, they're allowed to. It's their service. And th there's been a lot of this stuff going on with Scroogled. And not to mention now they've got the privacy setting. Pardon me. Where um, you can make it so that your stuff ain't being turned into ads for other people. And it's just supreme nonsense. But anyhow... That is that. Next thing up is how low U.S. adults score on the worldwide test. So, it's been shown that they lag in reading and math skills. And they have three chart things up here. Um, one for reading, one for math, and one for problem solving. Um... In which Japan, Finland, yeah, Japan and Finland got first and second place, respectively, in all of the categories. Um, and then Netherlands got third, Australia fourth, Sweden fifth, average 273, and the U.S. in 16th. That's reading skills, math skills. Um, three Flanders, Belgium, four Netherlands, five Sweden, average 269, and 21 US 253. And then for problem solving, Australia, four Sweden, five Norway, average 283, and 17 US 277, and you, the U.S.'s lowest score being the one on math, which must mean not too many of them are good with math. Pardon myself again. But, um, so, here's what some of the things 
what the um, findings say. So among the other findings, Americans scored toward the bottom in the category of problem solving in tech in a technology rich environment, which is quite ironic, as they as there are over th three tech giants in the U.S. The top five scores in the areas were from Japan, Finland, Australia, Sweden, and Norway. While the U.S. score was on par with England, Estonia, Ireland, and Poland. In nearly all countries, at least 10% of adults lacked the most basic of computer skills, such as using a mouse. Uh, although I suppose, oh, well, then again, my grandparents aren't Canadian like myself and everyone else in my family. Well, at least... That immediate a family, and then again, they don't have computers, so I guess they're off, or at least hopefully they can, they'd be off the hook for that. Japanese and Dutch adults who were ages 25 to 34 and only completed high school easily outperformed Italian or Spanish university graduates of the same age. And lastly, in England, Germany, Italy, Poland, and the United States, social background has a big impact on literary s literacy skills, meaning the children of parents with low levels of education have lower reading skills. Thank and I, I admit to having not the greatest literacy skills, in my own opinion. And yet, my mother reads books fast like a rocket. And sh she does really well at that stuff. <laughs> or so I believe. Um, and then the other findings are Japan, Finland, Canada, and. Hey, that's us, isn't that? Canada. Hey. Netherlands, Australia, Sweden, Norway, Flanders, Belgium, Czech Republic, Slovak Republic, and Korea all scored significantly l higher, I was about to say lower, than the United States in all three areas on the test. Wow. That makes me feel good that we're smarter. The average scores in literacy range from 250 in Italy to 296 in Japan. The U.S. average score was 270. 500 was the high score in all three areas. Average scores in 12 countries were higher than the average U.S. score. Um, the average scores in math range from 246 to uh, in Spain to 288 in Japan. The U.S. average score was 253 below 18 other countries. And lastly, very lastly, the average scores on problem solving in technology rich environments ranged from 275 in Poland to 294 in Japan. The US average score was to have 277 below 14 other countries. In other words, the US is really low in there, but um, I will have a link to that in the show notes. Just felt like sharing that, it was kind of interesting. Then again, what I've heard big time of is that the US is also one of the countries with the highest obesity rate in the world. Or so I've read in the Guinness World Records book. Although it could be a liar, but I think it's probably telling the truth. Plus there were quite a few fat people in the picture too. Um, next up we have the Oakland People's Crowdfunding Private Cops, in which through crowdfunding website um, crowd tilt 
Oh, actually, that's all they're using. So, just crowd tilt. They are wanting to fund their own cops, so the goal is between two, 20 grand and 25 grand, in which, um, if adequately funded, these three patrols they are funding will cover Lower Rockridge, Northwest, Lower Rockridge, Southwest, and Lower Rockridge. So a lot of Lower Rockridges. Just different kinds, I suppose. And, um, so unlike Kickstarter, the cr crowd tilt campaigns, they don't do the rewards, is one of the differences. So it won't entitle you to one free accidental shooting of your choice. The, uh, that's the words from this article, and I got a pretty good laugh at that. I don't feel like laughing at it now, thinking I've read it a lot of times, and, you know, when you've done stuff repeatedly, it gets a little more boring. <laughs> Pardon me, I just hiccuped. But, with that, all I'm really hoping for is that, that maybe... Having private cops will be better than having government-funded cops. Not to mention, well, they're not working for the government. They're working for their own people. So, I'd expect they'd have less crap they're allowed to pull. Like in Canada here, We've had a couple cops, um, there's cops that speed, go past red lights, even during chases, although this one cop actually slowed down this other day. Bloody surprising, too, because they usually don't slow down at all, they just keep on going. Then there's this other thing in which these two cops went over the border and I think back or something like that just to get um, a bunch of booze and they got in trouble and I think kicked out of their jobs too. Uh, I, I don't completely remember but that's best as best as I can remember. Um, I guess I'll get to this video. So, what's going on here is the other day, I believe it was yesterday, in which, Mal yeah, it was yesterday, I believe, in which Malala had a visit over to the White House and she had a chat with Obama about stuff and one of the things involving that instead of attacking her people in Pakistan and by that I mean because she's Pakistani as well and he's been killing a heck of a lot of Pakistani people, including ones that aren't their targets, or, well, we're told they're not the targets, but you never know. But, um, and what she told him that you are wrong, Obama, well, the... It wasn't her words exactly, but basically she said that instead of killing the Pakistani people, we should be promoting education, and you know what, your drone strikes just fuels terror terrorism in my country, so I recommend you just stop it. 
Because it's not going to help a thing, Obama. And I'll link to the video too. And like the young Turks say, God bless you, Malala. You may not have won the Nobel Prize, and she's even said so herself. The prize she really wants is the prize that there is worldwide access for all people to education. And just very inspirational in my opinion. And going up to see Barack Obama, the U.S. President of the U.S., the first black president. Um, what else? The president who wanted to bring, who wanted to mint a trillion dollar coin or bill. Bring in gun control. The guy who lets the NSA run. And the guy behind the signature, Obamacare. Well, behind his signature, Obamacare. That she, to his face, say, you are wrong. You are not correct in this, Obama. And you, you should just stop. Because it's not helping anyone. It's really more so frigging things up. If you ask me. And just much congratulations to her on that. And again, I will link to that. Um, the next one that I wanted to get to, I'm wanting to leave the WikiLeaks one for last. In which... In Florida, some dumb arse father decided that Minecraft is the reason his child brought in a gun to school. And, um, if I can find it here... Ah, here we go. So, according to VR Zone, the boy was reportedly portraying a character from Minecraft when he brought several weapons to his elementary school in Orlando, Florida. And school officials discovered the weaponry after the boy told his friends what he had stuffed inside his backpack. And that's pretty much all. He just brought a gun to school. Um, he had a steak knife on him and a small sledgehammer. And for some reason that's linked to Minecraft. Like, sure, he might be portraying, or he says he was portraying a character from Minecraft, but... And actually, I honestly think that the portrayal of a character from Minecraft is just anti-Minecraft BS. Maybe even... Actually, even anti-video games BS. And again, hey. People... Uh, a lot of people think video games fuel this and that. It's not video games, for crying out loud. It's... What is it? It's their mental states. It's news they hear about. And everything. That's... What gets them going. Adam Lanza, it wasn't Call of Duty. Although he played a heck of a lot of it. It's not Call of Duty or Activision or Treyarch's fault that he pulled off his massacre at Sandy Hook. It was the fact that 
he had some kind of mental state, um, and just something was going on in his mind that he should beat all these other people at pulling off these school shootings, and just somehow he had access to playing Call of Duty. And there I question what all his mother did to really actually keep him away from that stuff. Like, I, I honestly, I wouldn't give a mentally ill person a violent video game. Not because the video game is gonna make them go berserk, but and the the other thing too is with the Adam Lanza case, he in his diaries or whatever the heck it was, he stated he wants to get more points than these other people. Basically, the Call of Duty concept of awards in the game. And that uh, he wanted to get some points. And the reason he killed himself was so that no one would take his points. And if he was mentally stable, like myself or many others, of course, sure as heck, he would not have pulled that off. But he was in some odd mental state, and hey, not really much. He well, he can't do much about it now because there's over 20 lives lost, and including his life. So he can't really go back and give him counseling or any of that. But. Oh, and also on this side, I just noticed something about um, Fifty Shades offers a shady um, quarter of a million, of a million to, Char to Charlie Hunnam for lead role. So I'm, I wonder what that's supposed to be about. Um, and for some reason, he thinks that... It's contributed to his behavior, um, and a quote from him. Clearly, these games ha can have an incredibly powerful, and I suspect in some cases corrosive effect, on someone's behavior, someone's outlook. They get shut off. They don't talk to other people. They just stay in their living room, their bedroom hunkered down in front of their computer. They occupy a hermetically sealed world of their own that can have a very detrimental effect. So what the frick does that have to do with a kid bringing a gun into school? Really? And with bullets on him, what the freak does that have to do? And... This other quote, they use hammers to dig knives and guns to protect themselves from zombies. What the frick are you talking about, sir? That's gosh darn Left for Dead 2. Um, other than hammers to dig, you don't use hammers to dig. There's no hammers in Minecraft. What else are you going crazy about? Guns? The only thing you use guns in a game to protect yourself from zombies is Seven Days to Die, um, Left 4 Dead 2, Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies, or the World Out War Zombies. That's not in Minecraft, uh, unless, however, you modify it. But, speaking of the vanilla Minecraft, you don't protect yourself with a gun from zombies, you use a sword or bow and arrow. So, I, I, I suspect that guy's getting quite a lot of hate 
from a lot of people. But again, I, I, I don't hate him. Although I think he's abs actually I know he's absolutely full of crap. And in the comment section here, <laughs> you will you won't believe how much peeved off people there are about it. And um, that that's the other thing too that this guy Lee Kern the comment section brings up is uh, the the Xbox 360 SRB rating for Minecraft was everyone, although more exactly everyone can end up. And just because adults hate video games doesn't mean they can just, well, they can slurred out nonsense streamers about these games, but then they're going to sound like a dumb arse that way. Then again, that's a lot of how a lot of people sound like idiots is they don't know about something at all and in this father's case he doesn't know crap about Minecraft obviously other than apparently he knows that there are zombies but guns hammers those were never part of the vanilla Minecraft Maybe actually play the game, you'll actually, hopefully, understand. And maybe, well, maybe not understand, but see the crap you're full of. And, it's just absolutely dumb. But, um... The last article, or actually, I'll get to. Uh, I'll get to listener contributions before I go to the last one. So in the chat room, um, here's another one: old that they claim causes more gun violence. Dynasty Warriors. Huh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It causes more gun violence. There's no guns in that game. Um, another one from Thing. I heard that he did that because he wanted to, to do something that his mother wouldn't let him do. And this is the Adam Lanza case he's talking about. So he took the children's lives away from parents to avoid the children from being raised like he was. Too bad you guys couldn't see my face right now, cause <laughs> it, it's so tempting to laugh, but it's so stupid. Be glad nobody had a gun while they approached that pizza box. Apparently, that's the pizza zombie prank, and the ESRV rating for War Tune was hilarious. Everyone knows it's an online game and the rating was fake. Um, I'm gonna get you on the line here, thing. And you can tell me about that, um, default that was going on. So I'll get you on the line here. If it'll let me. Hello? Hey there. Is this thing? The guy who's gonna tell yes, us? Yes, it is. Alrighty. So, would you mind telling us about this um, default that's going on? I found an article about it, but... <laughs> but basically, he got to that too long, didn't read factor, and... That doesn't really make too much sense to me, but... What would you mind explaining it for us? <laughs> Hold on, your voice is like changing. Um, at first you were talking high and then it was regular, then it was low. Alright, so, alright, so basically, 
Um, the government was shut down October 1st, and for two weeks there were Democrats and Republicans, you know, in the House, and basically they were trying to um, change something about the whole Obamacare thing because of this guy named uh, Ted Cruz who ended up bringing it up, and, they, you know, there were, they were bills bouncing back and forth between the House and the Senate. And that lasted for quite a while. And then, you know, just time passed. Um, 800,000 people were furloughed because of the government shutdown. And, you know, it just, every single time I say, yeah, I just want them to come to an agreement. But um, they weren't able to do that. So finally, today, um, they were actually able to come to an agreement by... Um, I think there was I think there was uh, one provision that uh, Republicans put on that bill, something about verify the income for those who were um, going to be under Obamacare. But yeah, they r raised the debt ceiling until uh, it's, I'm trying to remember the date off the top of my head. It's probably. Um, Oh, I can't remember. It's it, it's probably somewhere in mid January. That's when, um, the let's see. I I can't remember. I have to look it up. But somewhere around uh, February, mid February. That's when. Um, I think that's when they have to uh like stop, you know, borrowing money and such as, and around uh. Yeah, so Feb February, first week of February, I think that's when they, you know, they have to, that's when the debt ceiling deadline is. But at least it gives them time to, you know, negotiate and hopefully, um, you know, the, like I said, the Republicans, they wanted to get rid of the whole controversial uh, uh, medical device tax that didn't seem to be working and – you know, they, they like I said, Obama, he said he didn't want to discuss anything about you know, the Obamacare during, <laughs> you know, budget negotiations. I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm milking it here. I'm trying the best I can. But it, it just seems to me that like I've there's some people who have been interviewed on Fox News and, you know, they're they're Republicans. And some people say that like Obama barely plays a role when it comes to negotiating because they say he doesn't want to get he doesn't want to get involved and but but he's willing to talk but not negotiate and I'm just I'm I'm just tired of this. So I'm glad they actually got to pass and raise the debt ceiling again, but they have to do something about Obamacare in my opinion because there have been people who are saying that um, there was a screenshot on Facebook that I saw where it showed a girl um, holding up a, a little. Uh, like like a board like it looks like paper but it's you can put marker on it it's a lot thicker it said that her health care plan was $255 a month and then because she applied for uh the affordable care act now that's $300 more so that's not exactly helping somebody underneath the new health care so um at, at, that's all i have to say i mean eventually next year we're going to have to apply you know, for health care to avoid a tax, and I guess I'm going to have to do that. I mean, I'm fully employed. I have a job, so I can do that easily. I'll be saving up money, you know, and not buying games and using that money for something that I really want. But, you know, that's life. And uh, a little off topic, my tire got flattened today, so I had <laughs> to, I had to um, yeah. replace it with the backup that I had, and thank God I did. So... <laughs> Little, little, little strange uh, day for me, but yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say about the healthcare thing, and I really hope that we can find a way to balance the budget um, really, really soon. Because I think that is one of the biggest problems. Is that um, you know, and my, and lastly, I think that there are some people in this world who deserve um, all of uh, taxpayers' money because they're disabled or they're veterans or they're, you know, they have disorders, diseases, that sort of thing. I don't think that our taxpayer money, the money that we have to pay for goes to those who think they're entitled to those who think that they just like the world owes them something because they're living. I don't see that. 
if you're physically capable of working and you want to work and you want to earn money for a living, if you want food, if you want to support a family or something, then just go out there and get a job because I think that's the really important thing you have to do. I myself don't work for the government. I work as a I work in a private third-party company that, you know, like manages background checks and and such as so, um, yeah, that's that's my two cents. So uh, thanks for calling me on Skype, and uh, I really appreciate it. I just wanted to get my thoughts out there because I'm a hardworking American, and I know you're Canadian. But that's, yeah. that's that we're still people, right? I mean, there's no difference. We're still a person behind a computer screen. I mean, it's not like there's a big difference between us. We we live on the the borderline. It's you're basically on top of us, but that's. Yeah, I, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all I have to say. Um, so thanks. I will. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, that's it. That's my two cents. All, all right. right. Well, have a very good evening, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of the podcast. Yes, I will definitely enjoy it. Okay. Take care. Take care to you too. Bye. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Thang, and I'll get your picture and thing and Thang down from there. Pun intended. Um, so I I didn't really know that's what that was about, but I thank you again for your two cents or how many cents that was. Although in terms of minutes, that was about six. So. And I really hope to God that did work in terms of that the audio got in. But anyhow, um, the very last thing I have to talk about that's with the rundown this episode is the is WikiLeaks leaking the Fifth Estate script in which so. The first time when I heard about the Fifth Estate, I was like, ooh, this must be a new episode of the Fifth Estate TV show. Um, I believe it's on ABC or something like that. Please correct me if I got the TV um, channel wrong. But um, I originally thought this was going to just be an episode of that show. But it's actually not. It's a film. And then I was thinking, documentary? No to the documentary as well. It is a film, but it's a drama. In which it's supposed to be sort of like... Social Network, if you've seen that. In which there are some fictional pieces to it. And quite a bit that actually happened when Facebook began. Problem with the Fifth Estate, it's been um, proven by WikiLeaks that it is heavily, completely, 99% inaccurate. Or in other words, it's going to be the complete reverse of a snuff movie. In which it is supposed to be about the whole thing going on with WikiLeaks and starting it up and everything and the controversies and everything. But the story it tells is what's so unrealistic about it. And, sure, they have Julian Assange, and, well, WikiLeaks, well, they don't have Julian Assange, they have Benedict Cumberbatch, but nothing else in there actually happened. And, after these, after WikiLeaks leaked the script, they tweeted, as WikiLeaks was never consulted about, the DreamWorks slash Disney film on us, we've given our advice for free. 
that it's bad. Just two simple words, it's bad. And uh, I gotta say this is probably, this has probably got to be at least one of their, if not their most legal leak. As it, it it's about something they've been doing. And it, it kind of, rev- it's, it kind of reminds me of the situation with um, the Pirate Bay, and I forget what the other one was called. It was a Swedish anti-Pirate Bay site. Ah, found it. It is Pirate, in which, other than that, or it's Finnish, but I, I'm pretty sure it's Swedish. Yeah. It, would be Swedish, I believe. But, um, what, what happened there was they're an anti piracy and obviously an anti pirate bay group. And what they did was they copied exactly Pirate Bay's script that they used for their design and everything, and they used it for their site. But the catch is, no matter what you ser- put in their search box, it would come up with, Ooh, you're trying to pirate something. Y- you're doing something bad and all that bull. And, you know, in some cases, like, honestly, I don't really support the piracy of independent media. As I more... Not, um, I, I don't mind the idea of the stuff with the big ticket stuff, because the, the big ticket stuff, they say that piracy would make these people lose their jobs if they lost their jobs over piracy. They'd be out of their jobs by now. Trust me. <laughs> well, you don't have to trust me, but... There's many people that'll give you that, for sure. And... The ironic thing about that is they're all about anti-piracy and what they did there. Not only did they... pirate something of the pi- Well, not really pirate, but more so plagiarize. They plagiarized the crap out of the pirate band. If you go to their site now, you'll come up with you'll find a pirate's life. And most likely, if you have one of these um, internet security apps like Re- Web of Trust or the Norton Site Checker thing, it'll probably come up with that this ain't a good site. Or at least it comes up with Web of Trust, which I highly recommend. And and then that reminds me of the stuff going on with the Greenpeace freaks jumping on to the, well, trying to attack the this other oil rig when, how did they get to it? Their own oil rig. Why did they want to screw up this other oil rig? Because it runs on oil. What does their oil rig run on, though? Well, um, I, I, th- I think, no, 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 I know, um, it's oil. So, basically just a huge freaking hypocrisy there. And, fortunately, they were arrested for it, for, um, piracy and what not. And this last part to the WikiLeaks thing over the Fifth Estate is his disapproving letter to Benedict Benedict Cumberbatch, in which, if you aren't too sure of him, uh, if you about who he is, if you have seen Star Trek, um, Star. Track into darkness. He plays the 
bad guy who in one of the scenes cracks this one girl's father's neck um, almost kills one of the main characters and causes quite a bit of hell and that guy is Benedict Cumberbatch oh actually that's something else I forgot to mention about what was le what was part of the leak in the screenplay was that also the film says that Assange dyed his hair wet. Now isn't that an insult to say that um, Julian Assange dyed his hair? If I were him, I'd be pretty unhappy with that. Um, let's see here. So. Benedict Timothy Carlton Cumberbatch has had roles in Hawking, um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the 2011 version, Tinker Tailor Soldier, Sherlock, yeah, the PBC version of Sherlock, Paradise's End, and the newest Star Trek film. And apparently he's Monk the Dragon and the Necromancer through voice in the Hobbit trilogy. And um So what he says in his open letter is that I believe you are a good man, but I do not believe that this film is a good film. I do not believe it is going to be positive for me or the people I care about. I believe that is that it is going to be overwhelmingly negative for me and the people I care about. I believe that you should reconsider your involvement in this enterprise. He continues, Con consider the consequences of your co cooperation with a project that vilifies the and marginalizes a living political refugee to the benefit of an entrenched, corrupt, dangerous, and dangerous state. And apparently Cumberbatch's reply was courteous and considered, and he and apparently, um. It was also reveal, revealed that um, Cumberbatch was was um, a bit troubled by this script because of the unrealism of it, and that this film is fiction masquerading as fact. Then again, that's probably well, that would be because I believe that it's saying it's about. WikiLeaks, yet it's not. Then again, that's also the problem with reality TV nowadays, too, is a lot of the stuff is fake. And a lot of stuff is um, rumored to be fake. Like, there is... There was Breaking Amish, the very fir the first season of it. In which they ended it with the shunning truth to basically prove to the audiences through the actors' own words that this was that the um if I can remember it now shoot I forget. Can't believe I just ran it out of my train of thought already. But, um, if I can think about it, come on, brain. Work it, work it, work it. Uh, well, basically, the Assange movie is, 
But basically, it's what they want it to be. I remember now, it was the shunning truth, in which the actors reveal their side of it all. That they're not actors. Did, I think I said actors, darn it. But um, that the that breaking Amish is real and is not staged. Um, there's stuff about stuff like Operation Repo being staged and oh, and then also um, Dave Hester. If you've watched Storage Wars, you'll know you might know Dave Hester being the cry baby on the show a lot, who curses a lot, likes to pick fights with Daryl, and Barry Wise, and by the way, thanks to Barry Wise for coming down to my city this year for the annual Retrofest, but anyhow... It's it's a wonder what's real nowadays on the television, because so many people are just staging stuff to make it look good, to make it look dramatic and everything. When the the point of reality TV is to keep it real. Who gives a crap about your drama? If you want drama, then. You'll just have to get lucky that your um, non-actors are being dramatic. But um, that that will be all for tonight. Um, actually, before I close, um, I would like to make a third-party announcement in which, um, starting last year, I started doing up a solely independent electronic music project that I call JBJ Blaze underscore on the moves um, in which I have finally decided screw having to have people pay for music that I make um, if you go to jbjblaze.bandcamp.com dot com or soundcloud dot com slash jbj blaze i um by so i've yet to set it up on soundcloud but um all my songs are now free you can feel free to make any donations if you want um which might come in handy for if i um out of my 200 downloads limit, but um, feel free to please check that out, and it'll really help me out with getting my music out there, maybe even release some new stuff. Then again, so far I've already seen this stuff with the Celine Dion remix contest, so I'm thinking of entering that. Um, just a few shout outs. Um, to Thang, who was on the call today for listener contributions. Uh, but I didn't really do up much of a bumper for that, unfortunately. I was thinking, like, <gasps> listener contributions! Oh, yeah! But didn't really think of it too much. But, um... So a big shout out to you, Thang, or Thangalang21 in the Twitch stream. Um, he's also being promoted to moderator. And I look forward to seeing you doing good work. Um, also, if you need big web hosting space but you have a low budget, then go to store.notelec, that is N-O-T, L-E-K dot com today where you can get web hosting starting at $1.99 US dollars per month or rounded 2 bucks per month and I highly recommend my friend services 
Um, Matt Folks was on for episode four, so about four episodes ago. And please go and give him some money. Give him some love. I love him too. And I plan on giving him some money and love too. Just go to get my money first for to afford it and stuff. Um, go check out Justy Gaming blog at Justy Gaming blog. That is b l o g g dot word dot wordpress dot com for awesome news reviews and more. And um, I I'm not sure if they've already gotten it in a new update. But um, I've been waiting for them to add in a capability for just media files rather than just screen capturing. But um, ffsplit.com, where you can get yourself a copy of a lightweight streaming live streaming software, in which it, it's basically the VLC media player of live streaming, although it definitely looks better than VLC. But, um, I recommend it, although it's not really useful for my podcast at the moment, but I hope that the creator of it, I forget what his name is, but, um, yeah. I recommend that you check his stuff out, and yeah. And actually, the very last shout out. Well, actually, second last. Um, go check out Trading Revolution for some great trades and everything. Uh, that is Steam Group, uh, Steam Community slash Group slash Trading Revolution, or you can follow us on. Well, yeah, the group on Twitter at Trading Revo. Um, we are a Steam trading group, and yeah. And the last shout out is to all you guys in the chat room. I couldn't do this so awesomely without you guys. You are my, you are the soul to this podcast, and I thank you all for coming in. Um. Have a good weekend. I'll be. I pl- I am planning on going to see the new Carrie movie next week. Hopefully, maybe Sunday, Monday, or even on Saturday. Um, someday that the Shaft podcast podcast isn't on, and I'm gonna get those missing episodes released. Um, again, thank you all for joining in tonight, and. Let's get going. What do you mean you want more, or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes. The flippinawesome.engine.com/bnp for show notes and to sponsor a future episode. Good night, as a Good night. Good night, night. Good night. What a game, man.